Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me to take a first look at the brand new 7th generation BMW 3 Series. We're going to check out the car in detail, explore the interior and the exterior, talk about the new details and features that are in one of their most popular and core models. So let's get started and check it out. This is the 330i M Sport. Here we go then, the latest iteration of BMW's hugely successful 3 Series. Now the first generation arrived way back more than four decades ago in 1975. And since then, across the six generations, BMW have built and delivered as many as 15 million units. It's very much the heartbeat of the brand, and from the 3 Series range, the saloon is really the core to that. So the latest generation has been launched at the 2018 Paris Motor Show. Customer deliveries will start in early 2019, and the model we're looking at here is the 330i M Sport. So in the UK, we'll have a 320D, a 320D X-Drive, and then the rear-wheel drive 330i. There are a number of different finishes available, but we'll talk more about those as we explore this in detail. One of the first things that you'll notice are the proportions of the new model. So it's grown in size versus the previous one. In fact, in terms of the length, quite significantly, as it's now 85 millimeters longer. It's also 16 millimeters wider, and it sits just one millimeter taller. The benefit of that is, of course, more space available on the interior that we'll see shortly, but also the general shape and silhouette is more sporty, and you also get those cues through the design and styling language. Now this car is presented in Portimao blue, it's a new paint option that's been introduced with the 3 Series and here in the studio it looks brilliant. Let's go into the design in more detail and starting right at the front we have BMW's signature dual kidney grills, although like some other models they're now becoming narrower, wider but also sharper in their design, more aggressive in the way they appear and in this case they're connected in the centre like the 8 series to have a single surround around the entire grille. On either side of that, you will find the BMW twin lights. In this case, we have the optional laser light, and you'll notice along the bottom edge, you now have that notch going inside the light, working with the design, that is also a feature that extends right down towards the bottom of the bumper. In the centre at the front, you'll spot the radar sensor, helping with some of the technology functions, and coming around towards the sides, the car has the air curtain, so just inside these side vents, air can be filtered and directed around the sides to keep it smooth and clean. In fact, from an aerodynamic efficiency point of view, the car now has a drag coefficient of 0.23 down from 0.26, which is really quite impressive. As we come around the side of the car, you have a few distinct lines. So you have the character line that runs from the front wheel arch along the side of the car above the door handles towards the rear. And then down at the bottom, you have the contour line that starts just behind the front wheels and swoops up towards the rear again for visual appearance. And if we come towards the back, you'll also notice the new tail lights, the L-shaped design tail light that runs in towards the boot lid. On the M Sport package, you have the lip spoiler here at the top. You've also got new tailpipes down there found in the diffuser, one on each side with this model. One thing I really quite like, if we come to the wheels, is that BMW are now introducing self-writing centre wheel caps that will automatically head back towards the top to make the car look good when it's parked. Those found in the centre here of the 19-inch dual-tone wheels that we have. So the colour looks fantastic on this car. If I just take out the key from my pocket, one thing I'd like to show you with the laser lights is the light show you get when you actually lock and unlock the car. So if we just lock it for the moment, you get there just the indicator flashing, unlock it, they open up, the motors work as they're moving around and they come to life, the twin light design that you have. Of course I mentioned on the grille it's more aggressive, you can also see the way the flaps open up again for efficiency as the car is being driven along, but from the outside it is what we know of the 3 Series, quite discreet in its styling, but I think sharpened and brought into the modern era. Anyway, let's jump now to take a look at the inside. Now this is one of the areas that has changed quite dramatically.
quickly. I think the first thing that you'll notice is that the driver can now have an optional 12.3 inch digital display for the dashboard. It's standard on the higher spec models, but let's take a step in here just to explore it in more detail and what we're looking at. So in the center screen, you also have the 10.25 inch display. This is the seventh generation of the iDrive operating system. In this car, we can have optional gesture control. So for example, we can do this twice and it will turn itself off, turn it back on, wake the car back up again. It operates via touchscreen, should you prefer. You can go through the different menus, back to home and explore this, change your tiles, adjust things depending how you'd like to have them set up. And it's almost seamlessly integrated towards the driver display. Like we've seen in the new 8 series and the Z4, the full digital interface that you have here, the new skin where you have the speedometer running around the left-hand side and the rev counter that runs around the right. Lots of controls that you can operate and interact with to change various bits of functionality and features that you have in the car. And a lot of it can be controlled other than by just your control or via the touch screen via the iDrive toggle that you have here to go through your different menus uh, and controls and it feels good this new style obviously you've got the touchpad on the top where you can write and interact and you also now have the personal assistant where you could literally say hey BMW and ask the car something like what's the weather in Hong Kong if you wanted to and it would tell you that answer back. So you could do that, you could say when am I going to arrive at my destination, you can talk to it, it will respond in natural language. Now on the inside as well we've got a new seat design, you have a few M Sport touches in here, so the likes of the seat belt trim with the stitching that you can see coming down there. On UK cars, as standard, you get the ambient lighting, so in this case we've got them lit up in blue, which I have to say looks very very good through that door trim and the way it comes along the dashboard. I'll talk more about about the engines and functionality we have up there but on the 330 you get standard the eight speed automatic gearbox on the 320s they're standard with a manual but you can opt to have the automatic should you prefer up front though it feels like a nice place to be there's a larger sunroof than on the previous generation the lighting up here is obviously very nice and this is where the gesture control toggle works there's a drowsiness sensor in the top of the display so the car will detect if you're nodding off or falling asleep if you're doing a long journey and a little bit on the tired end and obviously then it will suggest that you take a break and relax a little but we've also got some technology features tucked away in here for example we've got the uh, touch charging sensor for your mobile phone we've got some cup holders 12 volt socket usb port and some of the functionality that you expect to find in the car and then up here if we press this button is where you can go through your various uh, safety systems so for example front collision warning lane departure warning lane change warning side collision giveaway lots of different safety functionality and technology available inside this car and then you can jump back to home and you've got these different tiles again set up depending how you'd like to view them the steering wheel itself, we've got our adaptive cruise control here. That obviously uses, uses the sensor that we saw in the front end of the car. In the center, you've got the heated steering wheel. And to the right side, a few controls for your media uh, and infotainment as well. So if I just step back out for a second, let's open up the bonnet. Double pull here and come around and have a look at this. This car then, the 330, has the three liter twin power turbo engine. It makes 258 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. It's rear wheel drive with the eight speed automatic gearbox. So you'll get 0 to 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour in 5.8 seconds. And it will go on to a limited top speed of 250 kilometers per hour, 155 miles per hour. There's not too much to show you in here, hidden away underneath the covers over the top. But of course, a power plant that is featured in many different BMW models now. So let's just close this back down shuts neatly with the shape across the grills at the front of the car and come back to show you towards the rear seats and also the rear or the boot luggage space. So back here, the Hofmeister kink has changed. This distinct uh, swooping shape that BMWs have at the back of the uh, shape of the side windows, it's moved now to be part or fixed part of the C pillar as opposed to the edge of the window frame, which gives you this pillarless effect at the very end, which just looks or is a sign of premium uh, quality as I let the, go, the door slip back there. But jumping in towards the back, the ambient lighting continues through the doors you can see on the other side. I'll take a step inside just to see what the space is like. But this is where we've got 11 millimeters more space than we had in the previous generation. And you can see from my seating position, plenty of headroom above me. And to be honest, quite a comfortable place to be sat in the back of the car with a good view through the front as well. The displays and things that you can see from back here. In the rear, you've also got the armrest. You can have a through load system to open up from the boot. You've got your cup holders and that works more or less as you would expect it to do so. Seat back pocket as well and some decent cup holders. We've also got the Harman Kardon sound system in here, which is a nice 
feature to have installed too. So at the very back, you could open the boot from the key, or a number of different ways to be honest. I'll just do this for a second. Power fold tailgate opens up. I guess a significant part of the 3 Series is daily usability. You have 40, 20, 40 folding rear seats, and you can actually pull the levers just here to fold those down. And then when you go through, or if you push them through from the back, they fully open up and you have a lot of luggage capacity available. I think it's about 460, 480 liters as standard. So lots of space back there. And then one press of the button to close it back down. Now at the rear, just to talk a little bit more about the design, you've got these things that look like ducks, but they're actually closed up. Part of the sporty appearance with the M Sport, not actually functional though on this model at the moment. But these tail lights that come around from the side, around from this shoulder uh, line, the character line that we've seen and swoop in and cut under that rear. Um, section of the boot lid where the logo is displayed in the center. So the car has lots of cameras, reversing cameras, standard on UK specification. To show you in here, the seat's folded down. You'd move the seat belt out of the way, of course, but again, lots of room available. You can just fold this back up nice and easily, and all is done just like that. Practical car, easy to use from that respect. Another function that's standard on a UK car, if I unlock it, you'll see the mirrors folding, but we've come to have a look at the welcome lights that you have down there with that shape to them as opposed to just being a normal light. They give you a good visibility of the ground right where you're going to step. If you're going to be getting out and there's a puddle there, you will see it and be able to step over it. There's another little design feature you have here actually, the way that swoops through. Again, just enhancing the sportiness of the appearance as we walk around it. So, the new BMW 3 Series, inevitably going to be a big success, a very very significant model for them and you can see the way it's just sharpened up the design of the car it's taking the previous model enhancing it introducing new technology we've got M adaptive dampers available for example I didn't really talk too much about that but on the interior here you have your driving controls with your different driving modes depending how you'd like to experience it so you can set up the car in different ways press adaptive for example and it will work out what's happening as you drive you've also got the automatic handbrake a few different controls so you've got cameras on this car you've got park assist so it will help you finding a parking space, lots of different cameras that will equally help you park the car yourself should you prefer. So lots and lots of technology that's filtered down from say the 5 Series now down to find itself at home in the 3 Series. So I look forward to driving one of these in the not too distant future, which of course you will see right here on the Shmi 150 YouTube channel. But we've been able to take a first look at the brand new 3 Series. Quite an exciting car and one that I am looking forward to finding out more about in the future. So thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate your support as always. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the 330i. That's it for now though. I will see you again very soon. Cheers.